how to calculate slope from a graph. The goal of this tutorial is to be able to look at any line, like the red or the pink one, or any line whatsoever, and to be able to come up with its slope. You can find this tutorial on our website, mathwarehouse.com slash slope-graph, where you'll find many other uh, goodies, including a bunch of practice problems, um, worked out step by step, a free worksheet with an answer key, and an interactive applet that lets you drag a, a line around and explore slope. Okay, so we're going to break this lesson down into looking at lines that are slanted, and then we're going to look at some special cases of lines like these here lines that are horizontal and lines that are vertical so that by the time this tutorial is over you should be able to calculate the slope of pretty much any line on a graph all right so let's just let's review the slope formula the slope formula is generally taught as any of the following change in y over change in x or rise over run or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and these are just three different ways of saying the same thing for instance if you look at line p on the left here you can think about how the run would be how far you go sideways and the rise not surprisingly is how far you go up and down and the rise is one the run is three so the slope is rise over run, 1 over 3. Or if you wanted to do it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you could think about you know x and y, x and y. You would just say, let's maybe make these the x2 and the y2. You would say 3 y2 minus y1 over 4 x2 minus 1 x1 and you would get 1 over negative 3 um, oh sorry 1 over positive 3 uh, or 1 third right so you can use any of these delta y over delta x is the same as y2 minus y1 how much does y change and how much does x change okay so that's an overview um, of lo just looking at one um, one way of uh, one line here um, and I also want us to put a general pattern together that we're going to put on this line we found that the slope of a slope of one third ha was kind of going in this general direction so by the end of this tutorial I hope that we can generalize about what is tr always true about um, positive slopes like what their general direction is and one third went in this direction and what's the general direction of negative slopes right so we have not looked at a negative the slope of a negative line yet so we have no nothing to put there but one third went in this general direction um, let's see okay so the first question um, you know there's a few things that we should talk about here now what if instead of what if we wanted the bottom point here to be x2 and y2 <clears throat> for instance let me use another color so it's a little clearer. What if we wanted this to be x2, this to be y2, and this one to be x1 and y1? In other words, did we have to start with 4, 3 and subtract from that 1, 2? Let's try to start with 1, 2 and subtract 4, 3. The question is, will we get the same slope? Does it matter which line we start with? Let's find out. Um, it would be y2 or 2 minus y1 2 minus 3 over 1 minus 4 basically we just switch the coordinates instead of 3 minus 2 over 4 minus 1 it's 2 minus 3 over 1 minus 4 and do you think we're gonna get the same one third let's find out 2 minus 3 is negative 1 1 minus 4 is negative 3 and if you remember a negative over negative is a positive so you do indeed get the same slope of one third so it doesn't matter whether you start with the 4, 3, or the 1, 2. You will end up with the same slope. And let's see if that, you know, we'll see that we will see that that is true for this red line here. Here you can look at the slope is negative 2 thirds on the right. And if you prefer thinking of it as rise over run, the, the rise is 1, 2. The run is 
one, two. actually the rise is, um, is really, you can think of it as negative two if you want in terms of negative signs. And you go down two and then you run three, so you have a slope of negative two thirds. And if you use our formula, right, you can say, yeah, you've got an x and a y, an x and a y, and we can make these x2, y2, and this x1, y1. So it would be y2 minus y1, or 1 minus negative 1, over x2 minus x1, which is 0 minus 3. This is really 1 plus 1, or 2, over negative 3, which is negative 2 thirds. <coughs> now, from the prior problem, we already know that we could have switched the, uh, it doesn't matter which point we started with, and we could have really named the bottom one x2 and the top one x1, and that doesn't matter. So the next question is, does it matter which points we choose on the line? I mean, I chose 1, 2, 4, 3 on the left line, and this point 0, 1, and 3, neg negative 1 on the right line, but what if we chose other lines? Will we get the same slope? Well, let's look. Let's just try two other points and see what happens. So let's try this point and this point. All right, so we're still going to reuse the 0, 1, but we're going to have a new point here, which is going to be x is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and y is 1, 2, 3. So will negative 3, 3 and 0, 1 give us the same slope of negative 2 thirds? Let's find out. All right, so this will be x1, y1, since we already labeled that x2, y2. And it's going to be y2 or 1. Um, this is y1, right? It's going to be 1 minus 3 over x2, 0 minus x1, um, negative 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2 over this becomes uh, 0 plus 3 over 3. And look, you do get the same slope of negative 2 thirds. So, you can choose whatever two points are convenient. Any two slopes, any two points on the line will give you the same slope. Whether you do 0, 1, 3, negative 1, or negative 3, 3, and 0, 1. Whether you do the top or the bottom here, you end up with the same slope. And to sort of better illustrate that point, here's a picture of what a line would look like if the slope changed. If we went from a slope of negative two-thirds to a slope of negative two-fifths, you see the line would be crooked, right? So the slope of a straight line never changes, right? And let's also um, add to our, our collection um, here the slope of negative two-thirds looks like this, and let's add it to what we're doing here, a negative slope, like a slope of negative two-thirds, went in, in this case, it went in this general direction, right? So one-third went up, negative two-thirds went down. Let's see if all positive slopes always go in this direction, and let's see if all negative slopes always go in that direction. We're going, to, we're going to calculate some other slopes from graphs, and we'll uh, try to put a pattern together. Okay, now let's calculate the slope of these two lines here. And so far, we found one slope and it, that, that was uh, going in this direction. And it was negative two-thirds went in this direction and our positive slopes have gone up so let's see if these slopes here also are negative again we're trying to find a pattern while we're also learning how to graph from find the slope from the graph all right so remember you can choose any two points that you want and always go for nice easy ones uh, zero one that's that's a winner it's nice and easy small numbers I like it um, and then you, here's another point we can use. This would be x is 1, 2, 3, y is negative 1. And we've got an x and a y, an x and a y, label your points. 
Um, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go down here. X2, Y2, and this one X1, Y1. Of course, you could have switched them. It didn't matter. So Y2 minus Y1 is negative one minus one over X2 minus X1, three minus zero. Um, negative one minus one is negative two over three. So negative two thirds went down. All right now, let's find the slope of this line. Again, any two points. Um, 3, 0, 3, and 2, 2. Call this x2, y2, this x1, y1. So it's going to be 2, y2, minus y1. So that's 2 minus 3 over x2, 2 minus 0. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 over 2. So both negative slopes slanted down in this general direction. Um, our pattern continues to hold. Negative 1 half also was, in general, a line that was started at the top and went, as you moved right, it went downward to the right. Okay, now just remember you can always do rise over run for these and if you prefer rise over run You can just let me change the color of the uh, pen here. You can just Think of it as Rise is negative one because you're not really rising if you're going down the rise is negative So negative one rise and you're running two or in rise over run is negative one over two So always do it however you prefer choose any two points and you can either use the x, the, the y2 minus y1 formula, or you can use the rise over the run, and you will get the same exact slope. All right, um, so let's just confirm something. Um, all positive slopes go in this general direction. So if you see something slanted up to the right, it has to have a positive slope. And all lines that go down somehow like this, down into the right, also have a negative slope. <clears throat> this is helpful for you just to kind of double check your answer. When you're done calculating slope, it's nice to kind of know if you were right. And one double check is, if your line points like this, your slope really has to be positive. If it didn't, if it's not, you made some error. And if your slope slants down into the right, it has to be negative. If you get a different number, double check your work. So there's two cases we have not talked about. What about the slope of a graph that goes horizontally and the slope of a graph that goes up and down vertically? Well, like horizontal and vertical here on the, on the page. So let's just use the formulas we've been using to find out what's true about a horizontal and a vertical line. Um, remember, you can choose any two points. You can choose the point um, 0, 3, and the point 2, 3, and label them. Choose whatever you want to be your x2, y2, and use our formula. y2 minus y1 is 3 minus 3 over x2 minus x1, 2 minus 0, or 0 over 3 which just reduces to zero. So a horizontal line always has a slope of zero, whether it's the red line here, or this black line that I'm drawing, because on the top, remember, it's always y2 minus y1. And notice the y value doesn't change when you're going sideways, and that means that y2 minus y1 is always zero. Zero on the, on the top of a fraction is zero. So a horizontal line is always zero, and you can do it with the rise over run approach also. I mean, look at the black line there. What is the rise? Remember, rise over run is the slope. The rise is zero, you're not rising, and the run is two. So for any horizontal line, the slope is always zero. What about a vertical line? Again, we can figure this out from our formula. Um, choosing any two points here, let's choose the point two zero and the point um, 
two, three. Let's call this x2, y2, and this x1, y1. So y2 minus y1 would be three minus zero over x2 minus x1, or two minus two, which simplifies to be three over zero. Big problem here. We got a zero at the bottom of a fraction, which is undefined. So the slope of a vertical line is undefined, and rise over run will give us the same result. Because if you look at the rise over the run, well, here you rise 3, but you run 0. So rise over run would also be 3 over 0, or undefined. This will be true for any vertical line, because the run is always 0, or the x2 minus x1, since the x always stays the same. So that, that, is, um, that is it for finding the slope from a graph. Um, keep the general patterns in mind. If it's going up and to the right, you better have a positive slope. Down to the right, negative. If it's going straight up and down, you have an undefined slope. If it's horizontal, like this one, you have a slope of zero. And if you'd like to practice more problems with slope, um, go to this web page where you'll find many other practice problems worked out step by step, as well as a free worksheet with an answer key. Thanks a lot.